Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video we have a Lenovo IdeaPad 330S. And this machine was bought to me with couple problems. This laptop was dropped while it was turned on and the result from this drop is a crack on the case from the right side and the hinge is separated from the case. So if I try to open this laptop normally it will fall apart and the damage will be much larger. The laptop is still working, but the disk isn't recognized. When I take a look from the back side, I found another crack right on the speaker grill. So in this case, before anything, I need to check the laptop from the inside and see if there's some other damage. This is where the case is broken and this is the disk position. So the impact is right next to the disk. I took out a metal plate cover and here I cannot spot any other visible damage, which is pretty good. Now I remove the SSD because we need to check it and do some tests. Under the plate we have one more M2 SSD, so I will remove this SSD as well. In general this machine is functional and while testing before I didn't notice any other problems with the hardware, which is good. I took another new SSD. And fortunately, the disk was recognized with no problems at all. So the motherboard is good and the problem is coming from the SSD. I continue with installing Windows and I continue with further testing. This is not a common problem with the SSD and it's happening. This is mostly problem with the mechanical disks. So now let's move to disassemble this laptop and do some repairs. Also in this project, I'm going to do one experiment and I want to reduce the cost to the minimum. And as well, I want to show that many times we can do something good for a very little. I start with removing all the parts and here all the components are mounted to the palm rest. After I finish with disassembling, it's time to do some repairs and clean the laptop. First I start with cleaning the palm rest. And to clean the palm rest, I use brushes, soft napkins, cotton buds, isopropyl alcohol and compressed air. The palm rest is broken in the corner where the hinge is. And the two plastics with the brass bolts are broken as well. Again, using isopropyl alcohol, I re-cleaned the whole plastic around. To stick the plastic, I will use a little bit more quality super glue. I have to be very careful here because the keyboard is very close and super glue with the keyboard isn't a good combination. I'm done with the super glue, but until the glue gets dry, I move to clean the other components. I start with the motherboard first. The thermal paste looks good and not too dry. Here I use cotton buds, isopropyl alcohol and a soft clean brush to remove the thermal paste. The CPU looks fine and we can move to clean the rest of the motherboard. To clean the motherboard, again I used cotton buds with isopropyl alcohol, brushes and compressed air. I always pay attention to all sides around, including all ports from the side, like the USB ports, HDMI and etc. In general this motherboard is in a very solid condition and I didn't find any additional damage, which is great. Except one thing, this machine will be much better if there was a dedicated GPU. After I finish with the motherboard, I move to the top case or the lid. On the top case we have one sticker that I got request to remove it. I start slowly to peel up the sticker and it's going easier than expected. Here we have some glue that lefts from the sticker, but I use some isopropyl alcohol and the glue is gone. I don't like stickers on the laptop because the stickers can damage the case. 
Here in the video is very hard to spot the difference, but I'm gonna show something else. This is a beautiful 13-inch MacBook Pro. A beautiful case, but this here is from the sticker. And many times, this is hard to fix. Now, I continue with cleaning the whole top case. On the case, I found a few very minor scratches, but in general the case is in a very good condition. To clean the display I used a few soft cleaning clothes, cotton buds and isopropyl alcohol, but mixed with anti-static glass cleaner and I used brushes. I didn't remove the bezel because the bezel is already well sticked and no point of doing that. The factory glue that is holding the bezel is always better than some aftermarket glues. Sometimes I do remove the bezels, but only in case if the bezel is easily removable and the dust can enter to the inside, or if I need to change the display. The display and the whole top case are almost like a new one, but now I return to the palm rest. The glue is dry, but now I had to reinforce the case somehow. To reinforce the case, I used a very simple method, using baking soda. Carefully, I put a baking soda around the broken part. And over a baking soda, I add from a super glue. The baking soda and the super glue have a small chemical reaction and the both are creating a little bit stronger bond. Maybe this will sound a very ridiculous to someone, but in many cases, this can be a pretty great solution. After I apply the glue, I left the case for about 24 hours to completely dry. Meanwhile, I return to clean the other components, like the speakers, the other components and the cables, and the cooling fan with a heatsink. To clean the cooling fan, I start with a brush, but later, I wash the whole cooling using isopropyl alcohol, and as well, I have done the same with a heatsink. The cooling is like a new one. And now let's move to the bottom case. The bottom case is broken at a speaker grill, and two plastics from the screws are missing. The boat screws at the top are very important, because the boat plays a big role in the hinge and durability. Because the boat are missing, I use a plastic from some other laptop. Using dermal, I cut the boat, and later, using a scalper, I have done some adjustments. Carefully, I place the plastics, and again using super glue, I stick the boat. After the glue gets dry, again, I add baking soda and super glue, and I left everything overnight to get fully dry. The next day, I took the palm rest. I add a little bit of baking soda and super glue. Also have done the same to the boat. I mean to the palm rest and the bottom case. And again, I waited another 24 hours until everything becomes like a concrete. And again, I used dermal to make some adjustments to the boat parts. And also want to check the quality as well. The quality seems pretty good, and the baking soda in combination with the quality super glue has done a good job here. In addition, to the bottom case I add a two missing pads. So now the laptop won't lay directly on the plastic, and the aesthetics are a little bit better. And finally, this machine is ready to assemble. So first I start with applying thermal paste to the CPU. Also, over a thin layer of thermal paste I always put a small drop from the paste. And this is because to avoid small air micro bubbles that can appear later while at higher working temperatures. Now let's place the motherboard and the other components back in the case.
Now, before I mount the palm rest, I placed a soft, thin napkin. I do place something between the display and the palm rest because some laptop cases are very thin and flexible. And sometimes, while assembling, you need to press some parts to connect it or to place screws. And in some cases, the keyboard may cause minor scratches to the display. So to avoid any minor scratches or anything else, it's better to place something between. And the upgrade to this laptop is going to be the RAM. This model has a 4GB of RAM on board, which is non-removable. And here I will add a 4GB more. With 8GB of RAM, this machine will work a bit better than before. And yes, we can do some additional upgrades, but the budget for this laptop is pretty tight. Now, after I assemble the laptop, I cross over one more cleaning to remove the fingerprints and some dust that I've done while assembling. And now the question is, is the repair with the baking soda and super glue good and out? I'm going to use a stopwatch and the stopwatch is to show that I didn't speed up the video while editing. And everything is pretty fine. And if I do the math, I used about one third of this tube and a very little baking soda. So this is about 50 cents repair. I know, this is not a great like replacing the whole case, but it's working. After doing all repairs and tests, I moved to download and install some basic browsers, set up some basic stuff, doing some customization, like changing colors and wallpaper and etc. And after making all these changes, this is the final result. And a few words about this laptop. This laptop has 8 generation Intel i5 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes SSD. And yes, I agree, we can do some more upgrades here. Like maybe 8 gigs of RAM instead of 4 or adding bigger M2 SSD. But the budget for this laptop was very tight. So with a very little, we have to do something. In general, this laptop is still great for most daily basic tasks, such as web browsing, watching videos or movies, listening to music, also it's great for documents, reading something or study, and it's okay to play some games, with a fewer requirements. I tried to play the GTA 5. I used full screen resolution and low settings. And this game is running pretty slow, but you know, still playable, I mean, somehow. And if this laptop had a dedicated GPU, it would be much better. Well, and this is all about this Lenovo IdeaPad 330S. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give you ideas and inspiration to repair and back in function something or do something better. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.